How's it going? Welcome back to the show. This is You May Roscoe and I am Roscoe. And today we're going to be taking um, a look at an interview. Uh, this is uh, Freddie Mercury in, a, in an interview uh, called Musical Prostitute, uh, part one. So um, we'll be checking this out. Uh, before we get into it, I do want to ask for anybody who hasn't that they please subscribe to the channel. Also, make sure you hit the notification bell. Also, make sure that you uh, go over to Freddie Mercury, uh, Queen, all that. Go over to um, those home pages. Do the same thing uh, because we do want to support the artists. And even though this isn't, we're not checking out music and this is an interview, you know, we still want to support them. Um, but, um, well, you know, uh, Freddie Mercury's not here, but somebody's holding on the estate. Uh, I'm assuming so. Um, but yeah, no, we'll be checking this out. I don't or I haven't had a chance to um, see uh, any of the members uh, of, of of Queen, uh, much less Freddie Mercury in any type of setting other than, uh, you know, performing. So um, I just wanted to get a sense of like uh, or more of a sense of what type of person Freddie Mercury was um, kind of check out him in a room like I said that was outside of him just being a performer so and to talk about you know something like uh, being a musical prostitute that that was very that's a, that's a very interesting subject when you hear somebody say that it's like what are you talking about you know so I'm assuming he's going to talk about all of the ills with the industry and all this stuff but uh, we'll see now but I do want to, uh, before I continue, I do want to give a, a special shout out to John Borick, um, who um, is a, a, a special, very special, like a uh, person who uh, follows the page. Um, uh, we've been able to connect uh, and communicate through, through the comment section and um, through emails and stuff like that. And um and John appreciates the stuff that I do on this page, so I'm very appreciative of him. But he's uh very very appreciative because he sent me this. <laughs> like I don't know if people can see this, but yeah, I know the lights are reflected off of it and everything. But that's a Queen out a framed Queen album. <laughs> like that is so dope. Like like framed. Queen album, like the vinyl is still in, you know. And this is the same guy who sent me, um, he sent me a, a, a framed album with uh, Barbara Streisand, you know. So I have Wet, and now I have The Game by Queen, you know. So when I when I when I get when I get um, out of this place, because I'm not hanging it up here, <laughs> but when I get when I get in another place, you know that I that I deem is worthy. For this uh, i'll hang it up but i wanted to give john love for doing it uh for me i'll put that away now um we can go ahead and get this on the screen soon okay. how does it feel it's the end of a day like that do you like your job in an evening like that i love my job but i hate talking to people like you <laughs> Thanks. No, I mean, I love it right now because I said earlier on, you, you're the last person I'm talking to, so you probably get the best interview, darling, don't I? <laughs> I mean, the whole thing like this afternoon when you have to talk to so many journalists, what goes well, on? Well, it's, part, it's part of my job, so I have to do it. We don't do it that often, so I mean, it's like this is the first kind of press conference we've had for a long while, you know, three, four, five years maybe. So I don't mind it. If I had to do this every day, forget it. Do you sometimes have the feeling that, I mean, obviously people are asking the same questions all the time, that it's the music do. is your statement we always do. Not, not the talking? No, no, I think it's, it's more than music, you know, you, we're personality, so you talk about more than music. I mean, if, if all you talked about was music, depending on if you're a music paper, then you talk about music. But there's more to us than just writing songs. I mean, we do other things and we have characters and it uh, depends what you talk about. So um, I don't mind it, no. and and of course people ask the same questions because some some of the questions are current and they want to know about uh, the same things. So ask me about my solo album then, huh? 
Yeah, what about your solar armor? Oh, it's great. Of course it is. <laughs> mm -mm. Does, it, does it sound no, a bit different? Yes, it sounds... Had you had it hopefully it's, uh, it's, uh, it's not finished yet, see, so I don't know how it's going to come out, but um, at the moment I, I've worked on it for about two months, two or three months, and um, I was supposed to finish it before the Queen tour, but um, I need a bit more time. And um, it's sounding good. I've got. It's nice to actually play with uh, different people because I've always played with Queen all the time. And uh, so I had a, you know, there's a, a drummer from, the session drummer from Munich and a guitarist from uh, Munich. And so basically all German players. And um, it's, it's made my song sound different, you know. To people outside, it sometimes feels um, funny that, or uh, special that there are so many p solo projects, whereas the band is still going as well on the side. Uh, how would you analyze the, the influence of the solo stuff uh, for the band when you come to back together again? Is that an advantage that you're four strong writers who also do s stuff on your own, or does it? Yes, I think I think. Um in, in a funny way, I thought because um, I think this is one of the few groups that all four members write, and I thought that we'd be doing solo albums much before this. But I think, um, in a funny way, when we do a, a, a Queen album, they are like four solo projects within themselves anyway, because I mean, I have my bunch of songs, Brian has his, and Roger and John, and so it's, it's like four little solo projects working side by side, and then we put them all together. So I think that was the reason that we didn't actually go and, and, and do um, uh, uh, solo projects earlier on. I mean, if we, were write, if we were writing all the same kind of songs, then we would have get, gotten f fed up and said, oh, I want to do my solo album first. But we're all writing different songs, so it, it keeps us interested. So that's, that, that, that's, that's, that's pretty dope. And um, uh, the little did I know about Queen, you know, um, uh, outside of the music, well, you know, uh, I, I know very little of the music, to be really honest. You know, um, there are some songs that I have attached myself. Well, uh, a good portion of the songs, because Queen did have some really, really huge hits. You know, um, I can remember being like a little, little bitty kid. And um, uh, some, of the, some of those songs that were out around that time were like, huge anthems, you know, another one bites the dust. Uh Bohemian Rhapsody had already been playing. Um uh there's a couple other songs that uh that aren't coming to mind right now. But yeah, these songs were already like big songs, huge songs, you know, and so yeah, um uh but yeah, no, when he talks about that whole the 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 way that he views the group. Like they 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 were for or they they're basically four soloists you know, who are a band, you know, and um, the, the the songwriting, how he says that everybody's writing different songs, so there was no need to to jump out and do solo stuff at first, but um, yeah, I didn't even know, I, I thought like uh, the bulk of the solo stuff, I didn't know that Freddie had a solo album, I, I really didn't, you know, um, so I didn't know that, um, but I did know that the the other band members did solo stuff, but I thought all of that stuff kind of came after Freddie, you know, so I'm learning something, you know, but um, let's continue. All four members write, and I thought that we'd be doing solo albums much before this. But I think, um, in a funny way, when we do a, a, a Queen album, they are like four solo projects within themselves anyway, because I mean, I have my bunch of songs, Brian has his, and Roger and John, and so it's, it's like four little solo projects working side by side, and then we put them all together. So I think that was the reason that we didn't actually go and, and, and do um, uh, uh, solo projects earlier on. I mean, if we, were write, if we were writing all the same kind of songs, then we would have get, gotten fed up and said, oh, I want to do my solo album first. But we're all writing different songs, so it, it keeps us interested. So for what about thirteen years or whatever, you know, that was interesting enough for uh, for us to carry on. And as far as I was concerned, all Queen albums were little solo projects anyway. I was writing my kind of songs that I wanted. <laughs> but now I think the time has come where I want a whole album of my own. And Roger's done two already, so I think most people thought that I would be the first one to to have a solo album, and then the band, would, uh, you know, Queen would break up and all that. But um, here you are, after thirteen years. Uh, 
Four old, four old ladies are still rocking away. <laughs> what about the, the actual work in the studio when you four come together and everybody wants to, to bring his side of songs? Yeah, that happens all the time, yeah. It well, sounds like having also It's uh, like a arguments. cock fight, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, four well, we, we've all, uh, four cocks fighting. Oh, it's getting nice, this. <laughs> no, but you know, the funny thing is, this, this sort of happened almost when we've met, the four of us, and it's, it's just, you won't believe it. I mean, people think that, okay, now they're fighting. We fought on virtually the first day, because we used to know each other from university and all that, and we used to fight about um, uh, musical um, um, ideas and this and that, because we're all very strong characters, you know, and we all have egos and all that, so we always kept fighting. But I think the, the fighting seems to keep us together, because um, I think sometimes, uh, I think bands break up when there's one very strong person and the others, and, and the others get left out and they think, oh God, this asshole is just too strong and we want to join another band. But the four of us are real, actually I can't say these four letter words, huh? so we're very strong you know, uh, individually, so we just keep uh, going at each other. And I think the reason we've stayed together for so long is just none of us want to leave, because I mean, if you leave, it's like being a coward and you're going out, so we're still keep going and um, as long as the music is still there and as long as the people are still buying the music then then it's okay when they stop buying again um, I, I, I like when he talks about you know the fact that they uh, um, like normally he's right uh, in, in the case that where he talks about like how normally bands have you know um, they have the one guy who's looked at as the superstar and gets all the praise and adoration and all that stuff and then the other band members are kind of left in the wind um yeah no uh when you have they, he they, he say, he's saying they have four of those guys you know so um and, and usually that would still make make for a breakup like he said but it, it kept them it kept them together somehow um very interesting but uh let's continue we're very strong you know, uh, individually so we just keep uh going at each other and I think the reason we've stayed together for so long is just none of us want to leave because I mean if you leave it's like being a coward and you're going out so we still keep going and um, as long as the music is still there and as long as the people are still buying the music then then it's okay when they stop buying our records then I'll say goodbye and do something else become a strip artist or something yeah what to what music you would strip what music would you use? All the songs I've written. <laughs> oh, like, come on. <laughs> Duh. Whether you're curling or crunching, running or riding, lifting. Announcing a tour like that, if you think of the tour life that's ahead of you, is that a pleasant um, imagination or do you hate tour life, basically? What, the, the, the touring? Tour, touring and all this. It depends. I mean, uh, this tour I'm looking forward to because we haven't done it for two years. There was a time where we were doing tours so extensively because I mean we, we would go into a studio, make an album, and then tour the world, and then we'd go back, and that was the routine. I mean I didn't have any time to actually break away, and we d virtually did that for about eight or nine years, and that's why the last couple of years we we wanted to break away from that format because I was getting very bored, and so were the others, and just to get away and, and do different things and <clears throat> think about certain things. And um, so this tour, I'm, I'm looking forward to it because if we haven't toured and uh, we can do different things. It's going to be uh, a bit, it's going to be fresh, you know. And um, otherwise there were tours I hated because, I mean, we used to do American tours that lasted for three or four months and towards the end it was just terrible. I just never wanted to go on a stage again because after a while the songs sounded very... You know, if you're doing it for three months, you have to say, do the same routine, and you know, you just you need time away so you can get freshness into it. And I think that could, that probably happens to everybody. What's the fresh element now in in the new tour? That you're to me, playing? my costume. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just um, <laughs> it's new. I mean, I, um, the one thing element that I like on this tour is that we are actually going to go all the way back and do so songs from all the old albums as well because I mean, so that I think anybody coming to see Queen this time is going to get a little piece of all the albums so I mean there are times where somebody comes to a show and say oh they didn't do anything from this album or whatever of course we can't do um, 
all the songs from 13 albums, we'll be there for two days. But um, I think what we're doing is going to take, even if it's one song from one album and, or two from each, we're not going to leave any album out. So I think that, um, that to me is, is fun because we've been practicing some of the early stuff. I mean, we're practicing Keep Yourself Alive and Liars from the first album. And uh, it made me think, you know, that about 13 years ago we were doing this and uh, at that time I had long hair and black fingernails and makeup and everything, the kind of thing that Boy George is doing right now. And to think that I'd sort of still be singing those songs, it sort of uh, makes me sound old, doesn't it? Well, I don't look too bad for 37, I tell you. <laughs> Let me stop this. Um, I, it's funny. Uh, I, I don't know what year this is, but if I had to assume, it would have to be like 83, 84 or something like that. You know, um, I feel like it's somewhere up in there. If he's talking about like Boy George, you know, because um, I think that that's around the time period, you know, 84-ish, maybe 85, when... Uh, Boy George became a thing, you know, and uh, let me push this back. Let's do this right here. We'll go ahead, finish this out, but uh, interesting stuff, you know, let's, let's keep it going. Somebody comes to a show and say, oh, they didn't do anything from this album or whatever. Of course, we can't do um, all the songs from 13 albums. We'll be there for two days. But um, I think what we're doing is going to take, even if it's one song from one album and, or two from each, we're not going to leave any album out. So I think that um, that to me is, is fun because we've been practicing some of the early stuff. I mean, we're practicing Keep Yourself Alive and Liars from the first album. And uh, it made me think, you know, that about 13 years ago we were doing this. And uh, at that time I had long hair and black fingernails and makeup and everything, the kind of thing that Boy George is doing right now. And to think that I'd sort of still be singing those songs, it sort of uh, makes me sound old, doesn't it? Well, I don't look too bad for 37, I tell you. <laughs> do you have the feeling that a lot of people are imitating, because you mentioned Boy George, do you have the feeling that you see them come and go while, while your career is, is, is going on? You know, so many new no, I don't. I don't think Boy George is going to come and go. I think Boy George is going to be here for a long while. They always have, I mean, there's, there's always people that come up like that. And you, uh, for me, you can always tell somebody who's going to stay in some, and Boy George is going to stay. Mm -hmm. I don't know. What do you think? Yes, I think so too. If yeah. the, the, the question is, what will he wear in 10 years? Oh, that doesn't matter. I mean, you know, you <laughs> that's the least of his problems, I should think, you know. Mm -hmm. What does it mean to you? I mean, I talked to Keith Richards recently and he said the most important thing in his career was when he realized that being on stage and being admired by young kids is not the answer to life. Did you have a similar experience once when you first of all thought that's it and then you, um, from a certain stage, you're thinking of something else that's... No, the most important thing to me is to be happy, to be honest, to have fun. And depending on how, whatever I do, I mean, of course music is important to me and because uh, that's my life. And uh, as long as, I mean, I can, um, I'll carry on as long as I, uh, I write music and people want to buy it. That's important to me, but I mean, that's not the be-all and the end-all. I mean, I just, um, they're very, sort of, to me, happiness, ha happiness is, is, is the most important thing. And if I'm happy, then it shows in my work. And, and so basically, I just want to be happy and um, make a lot of money and, and, and buy a lot of things, especially in Vienna. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> antique. Yep. All right. All right, cool beans, cool beans. And uh, we see that there's actually a part two to this. I'm glad that that popped up because um, I'll get around to doing that part two like very, very soon. So let me uh, push this back like right there. And then uh, that was uh, Freddie Mercury, uh, his interview, Musical Prostitute, part one. And um, that was um, that was really cool to see like Freddie and his um in his own element, you know, kind of just being loose and, you know, uh, being itself and all that stuff and not having the constraints of, well, this is the constraints of doing the job, you know, is being interviewed. Uh, as he said in the beginning of this, you know, it's not one of his favorite things, you know, or favorite parts of uh, the business, you know, but, um, you know, he knows it comes with it. So, uh, 
when you know when he feels like doing it because he said they don't even do a lot of these you know but uh, when they feel like they want to do it you know um, he jumps out there puts himself out there but um, yeah no just very interesting to hear like his views on the band and stuff like that and um, uh, you know on current artists like Boy George and stuff like well current at that time you know but um but yeah, no, he, he he wasn't a hater. He wasn't like boy George, fuck him, <laughs> you know. I, 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 that's good stuff. I'm glad that he he was accepting of the fact that you know, um, uh, there's uh, even though there's a lot of uh, mainstays within the industry, there's uh, some things that are going to come and go, you know, and uh, some of these things that come are uh, going to turn into new mainstays and stuff like that. So um, just real cool interview to check out. Can't wait to check out part two of this. But um, uh, I'm going to leave. But before I do, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, hit the share button, hit the playlist option. You'll pick the one named Entertainment Reactions. Um, I'll put this in that playlist. You'll see this and anything else that's entertainment base any interviews or uh anything remotely of that nature is going to be in that playlist i do have playlists for other things a lot of that stuff is going to be music based but um i have playlists for everything pretty much so uh check out those playlists cash app dollar sign you made roscoe paypal at you made roscoe super thanks option is available for those who like to show their support or appreciation for what's being done on the page. Any donations will be made to any of those spots. And that's it. I'm done. So I will see you guys again soon. So until next time, be safe and be good.